Andrews Hockey Growth Programs presents Modern Techniques of Hockey Skating. The most important aspect of today's game of hockey is skating. Skating accounts for at least 60% of a hockey player's performance. Good skaters are not born. They learn through proper instruction, practicing skills correctly, and most importantly, hard work. In this series of skating, program one will include the forward start, the forward stride, and forward crossovers. We will also be doing exercises that will help you develop these skills. Proper technique allows hockey players to perform better while using less physical and mental energy. Since hockey is a game of seconds, every player should develop and practice the mechanics necessary for quick forward starts. The three forward starts used most in skating are the crossover start, the lead foot or thrust and glide start, the neutral or open start. Although the lead foot start is the quickest skating start, the neutral start has more advantages for hockey because it allows a player to go in three directions. It is also used to move forward from a backward snowplow stop. From a starting position, the player's feet should be shoulder width apart. This will allow the body weight to be over the pushing foot when the skates open for the first thrust. If the feet are too close, the heels will touch when the feet open. The knees and ankles are flexed and ready. This allows for good balance and maximum power on the start. The skates open so that during the first stride, the rear foot forms a 90 degree angle with the intended direction of travel. For maximum power on the push, an angle of about 45 degrees should form between the ankle and the inside edge of the skate. The knees are open with the inside of the knee joint pushed ahead. The upper body leans forward to about 45 degrees with the weight over the driving leg. There should be no glide on the first two to four strides. It is therefore important that as the second pushing foot goes forward, it is rotated outward before it hits the ice. You will notice that the beginning strides are short and the legs are not completely extended. Fully extending the legs at the beginning will cause the skater to glide too early resulting in a slower takeoff.
The skater must shift quickly from one skate to the other in order to always have the body weight over the skate that is pushing. It is also important to keep the knees bent and the center of gravity low. This keeps the skates close to the ice and prevents time loss caused by jumping on the start. Although it is a little faster to start with one hand on the stick, it is also important to practice starting with two hands on the stick in order to be prepared for all game situations. The forward neutral start is a very important part of today's game of hockey. We'll now have a look at a few exercises that will help teach the proper technique for the forward neutral start. The penguin walk is a fun exercise that will help teach proper mechanics for the start. For this exercise, it is important that the feet are as open as possible. The skates form an angle approximately 45 degrees with the ice. The knees are rotated out with a forward lean. When you can move like this, you're well on your way. This partner push exercise is another way of practicing the forward start. You will notice that the upper body is forced to lean forward during the push. The feet and knees are rotated outward. The angle is ahead of the pushing skate edge, forming an angle of approximately 45 degrees. The inside of the knee is forced ahead of the skate. After the first four to six strides, the skater will begin to glide at full speed. These exercises and skills, when practiced correctly, will develop the skater's ability to win the short races and play a better overall game of hockey. We will now look at the proper mechanics of the forward stride. One of the most important aspects of forward skating is knee bend. A knee bent to this degree can push to the side only this far. When the knee is bent to approximately 90 degrees, it will be ahead of the toe and will allow the skater to push out six to eight inches farther. This will result in a longer, more powerful stride. To use the long stride properly, it is necessary to return the skate back under the center of gravity so that the body will be completely over the inside edge of the skate. This produces more power on the push. So instead of pushing from here to here, the skater should be pushing from here to here. Here we see a demonstration of forward stride. You will notice the knee bend. Here you see the feet returning under the center of gravity. Although studies have shown that fast skaters push down to the side and back, if the push is made strongly to the side, the leg will naturally finish the stroke pushing back as the body moves forward. Pushing to the side will allow the player to get the complete blade, including the heel, into the push. This results in more power and will cause the skate to return to the center of gravity close to the ice for a more efficient stride. 
There are actually three forces available to move the skater forward. For maximum efficiency, each of these forces should be utilized. The first source of power is generated from the leg. This power comes from the hip joint, knee joint, and ankle joint, and finishes with a powerful thrust when the leg is completely extended to the toe. One of the marks of an efficient skater. When the skate is brought back under the body, a second source of power is available when the weight is balanced over the gliding foot. The third source of power comes from the forward lean of the upper body. This forward lean of the upper body should be approximately 45 degrees. Skating efficiency is lost when the skates are not returned completely to the center of gravity. When the skater's upper body is not leaning forward at approximately 45 degrees, available power is not being used. When a skater bends too much at the waist, he will lift the heels and the push will come from the toe and not the whole blade. A skater who bends too much at the waist will also take longer to return the skate to the center. The arm movements in the forward stride are the same as in walking and running and help with balance and speed. When skating with one hand on the stick, the skater should be encouraged to move his arms straight ahead and back as much as possible. When a player skates with two hands on the stick, the stick should move from the side to the front, on or close to the ice, with the elbows away from the body. Hockey players should be taught in what game situations to use one hand on the stick and should always avoid skating in this manner. Understanding proper fundamentals of the forward stride, the first step in developing good forward skating technique. Now we will look at some exercises that, when done properly, will improve the forward stride of the beginner and the pro. This forward pumping drill is excellent for teaching proper body mechanics for the forward stride, and it is also great for developing leg muscles, especially the muscles in the upper leg. Here you see the leg fully extending to the side with the push coming from the complete blade, including the heel. After the strong push to one side, the skate returns to the center and becomes the new gliding foot. Returning the skate to the center so that it touches the gliding skate will ensure that this exercise is being done properly. Again, we look for proper knee bend and a straight back with a 45 degree lean. When one leg thrusts to the side, the gliding foot must move in a straight line. This helps develop skate control and will result in more efficient skating. Make sure that the body weight is over the gliding skate. Beginning skaters and those with bad skating habits will benefit from this forward sculling exercise. This drill will encourage skaters to bring the skate to center after the sideways thrust. Most of us have a natural left or right dominance. One foot performs better than the other. One foot pumping will help correct this weakness Again, we keep the gliding foot going straight with the knee well bent. Skating against resistance is one of the best ways for hockey players to develop a strong skating stride. This partner pull drill forces the skater to lean forward. 
An instructor can easily see if the skater is using proper mechanics, such as complete leg extension and foot returning to center of gravity. Partner pushing is another way of developing the forward stride. It is also a good way to develop leg muscles. In all exercises against resistance, make sure that each technical aspect of the skill is done correctly. One foot balance exercises such as these help to develop control of the skate edges. These exercises will also force the skater to keep the skate under the center of gravity and will add some fun to the workout. Skating with the stick over the head forces the skater to keep the back straight with the proper lean. The knees are well bent, the legs are completely extended, followed by a proper skate return to center. This exercise exaggerates the sideways thrust and will develop a low heel recovery. Gliding exercises such as these will help lengthen the stride and will develop good knee bend and a strong leg thrust. This drill will help to develop stride length while encouraging continuous forward motion. These are some of the exercises that 14-year-old John Andrew has been doing for about six years. Speed and lateral motion are important skills for young hockey players to develop. Forward crossovers, sometimes called cross cuts, must be learned by all hockey players. Forward crossovers must be practiced to the left and to the right. Forward crossovers are used to gain speed while skating on a curve and coming out of sharp turns. This demonstration shows crossovers being used from behind the net. To execute this skill correctly, a number of moves must be mastered. As in forward skating, the knees should be well bent. The outside knee should completely cross over the inside knee. If the knees are well bent, the crossover skate will remain close to the ice and cross in front of the inside skate. The weight is on the back half of the blades. To get maximum power from forward crossovers, both legs should push to complete extension. Crossover leg and the underneath leg. The complete blade should be used on each stroke with the final thrust coming when the foot and toe are completely extended. Both skates begin the thrust from under the center of gravity. As in forward skating, if a player bends too much at the waist, he will only be pushing with the toe. The back should be straight with a forward lean. Both skates begin the thrust from under the center of gravity. The shoulders should remain parallel to the ice. If the inside shoulder drops, the skater will be in danger of losing his balance. The head is turned toward the intended direction of travel. Crossovers should be practiced with the inside shoulder pointing forward and with the chest facing forward. To skate on a sharper curve, 
the inside hip is forced towards the center of the curve. Skating the circles, teaching the aspects of the crossovers one at a time, is one of the best ways to teach this important skating skill. Extra time should be spent skating clockwise as many hockey players are weak in this direction. This underneath push drill may be used to stress the importance of using the underneath foot. If the crossover knee is not bent properly, the push from the underneath foot will come from the toe instead of the complete blade. This is a good balance exercise to practice getting the outside knee completely over the inside knee. In this program, we've looked at the forward start, the forward stride, and forward crossovers. Remember, improving your skating skills will improve your game. Program two will deal with backward starts, backward skating, backward crossovers, mohawk turns, and how to develop these skills.